Now what I want to do in this second tutorial is calculate some statistics um, on a monthly basis for the rainfall data. First thing I'm going to do is save this model as a new file. I'm going to put it on my desktop here and call it I'll call it um, tutorial to precipitation statistics. Okay, so I'm going to create a container in which I can house all of these statistics. And then um, I'm going to uh, go into the container. And the first thing I want to do is calculate monthly totals. And this is a really easy one to do because all, all we need is a um, time, uh, time history result element. And I'll get that from up here, time history result. And with the time history result, there's an ability here to show a different kind of display setting called reporting periods. But before we select that, I need to set that up in the simulation settings. So I'll go up here to settings. And down here where it says reporting steps, I'm going to add major and minor and keep the defaults annual and monthly periods. And I'll change the text label to be annual for, for annual, monthly for monthly. And now I want to save results on these reporting steps, but also at each time point, which is a daily basis. So I'm going to keep this at one. Uh, we're saving results for every day, plus the annual and the monthly reporting periods. I'll click OK there. And now what I can do is go back to the time history result, add the result of the daily precip, and then we come over here to the custom statistic. Oh. First, we have to change the time display setting to reporting periods, and then we can say, I want to look at the cumulative rain that fell during that period. I'm just going to change this to be uh, for millimeters and click close. Now, when I run the model and I look at this history, we can look at, on a monthly basis, the statistics um, for each month, and I can display that for either stepwise or for um, interpolated points. I'll keep it with stepwise. So this shows us, if we look at a table, it shows us the monthly values, uh, monthly cumulative rain values for each month. We can also look at it for the year, and this shows us the average cumulative rainfall for all of the years on record. And note it says the mean. This means that the, the value that we see for January is the mean cumulative January total of rainfall. If we want to, we can add custom statistics to our result. So I'll go ahead and do that now, but first I need to return to edit mode. I can open up the properties of this time history, and I'm just going to add a reference to the same output twice. Now we have a total of three of the same exact outputs, except what I'll do is show different cumulative period results. Instead of just showing the mean, I can show also the 10 percentile, the mean, and the 90th percentile. So now when I run the model, and we look at this result, we can, instead of choosing statistic, we can say custom statistics, and now it shows us all three of those values, the 10 percentile, the mean, and the 90th percentile. So for January, um, the mean total rainfall for January is 33 millimeters, but the, 10, the 10th percentile is um, about 12, and the 90th percentile is about 58 millimeters. We can also see that in the chart view. So we were able to do quite a bit of statistics with just one element in GoldSim. 
let's do some, some other statistics that involve periods of time. So for example, let's say we want to um, see what the total uh, number of wet days is in the model. I'm going back to edit mode and I want to add another expression element that helps us calculate the number of days that it was wet. So I'm going to go up here to the functions category and add a new expression and call this um, rain today, which would return uh, a boolean, true or false, if it is raining today. So any rain that is greater than zero inches or zero millimeters would be considered wet. I'm going to change this type from being a value or a number to a boolean. So I go up here to type and instead of value, it's a condition. That's actually what we call boolean. Same thing, right? Condition or boolean. And then I select OK. And now what we can do here is say if the precipitation today is greater than zero millimeters per day, then it's going to be wet. So that would return true. Now what I want to do is I want to go back into my statistics and now I want to um, put in an if statement in here that that counts the days if it's wet. So I'm going up here to the functions, then I go to the selector, I put this in here and I say, um, I'll just call this num of days. And so this is the number of days that are wet. And so in my condition statement here, all I need to do is refer to that expression I created called rain today. So if that's true, then I'm going to count one. If it's not wet, it'll be zero. And then we just go over here and we create a new time history result element. And then I'm just going to add that output number of days. And I want to look at the cumulative number of days um, on a reporting period basis because I want to know the number of days for each month. So then I change the time settings to reporting periods and then I select cumulative here. And with that done, now I can, oh, and I should probably also label this. Let me, let me put a line around this uh, text here so that I can kind of separate things. Copy and paste that. I'm going to call this number of wet days and then just move this over like that and set that to the background. Okay, now I can run this model and look at the total number of days and we don't want to do annual, we're going to do monthly. So this is the total number of days um, that it's wet and I don't want to look at the probability right now, I'm just going to look at the mean. So on an average basis, uh, January tends to have, um, or on average, between the period of record of 1948 to 2018, we, on average, have 10 wet days in January. And in, in July, we have um, just over four wet days on average. So this is a pretty good statistic to have, um, especially when you're trying to generate uh, stochastic rainfall. It's good to, to um, validate your stochastic rainfall generator by seeing if it has, if it's able to generate this type of an output that has similar number of days that are wet. Okay, another good statistic is the peak rainfall. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go back to edit mode and to calculate the peak rainfall, we need what's called an extrema. So I'll go over here to the functions category, click on extrema, put that in here. And then I'm also going to um, copy and paste this little title here and call this um, peak monthly rainfall. Okay, so, and we can line up all these boxes later and make that look nicer, but um, essentially all we need to do here is um, call, well, first I'll name this peak rain. It's essentially the maximum um, precipitation amount in each month. Okay, and we will put in here millimeters per day. So it's really the, the maximum intensity of, of, of average daily rain that is recorded in our time series. So I'm just gonna reference the time series here. Okay, and we wanna keep this 
as showing the peak. You could also alternatively look at the minima, um, which for the most part would be zero, I would say, for in most cases for when we're looking at rainfall. Uh, but we want to look at the, mac the the peak rain amount or peak rain intensity um, that's in our in our historic record. So this will work fine, um, but this is going to show us at the end of the year uh, what the peak is for the total year. We want to know what it, what it is on a monthly basis. So I'm going to reset the extrema every month. So now I'm going to um, set a, a trigger that triggers this extrema to reset. Um, in our case, each time the month changes. So I'm going up here, I'm going to select on changed and go to month. Okay. Now with that, I simply add another time history results element down here. Um, I'll call this peak rainfall and just refer to the uh, peak rain. And now, um, oops, we still want to look at the reporting period data. And instead of cumulative, right now I want to look at, at the period end. So we're going to keep that as the default um, because the extrema doesn't know what the maximum is until the end of the period. Now we run the model and look at the results for monthly. And we can see on a statistical basis um, that at the end of each month, we've calculated a point. And you can see that it, it doesn't know the, the peak until it gets to the end of the month. So the best way to look at this plot is probably with symbols instead of lines. So I'm going to change this to show a point. And so this is the value for January. It doesn't know what the, the peak is until we get to the end of January. A better way to look at this is probably in a table form. And this shows us that the um, on average, January's peak rain is uh, almost 11 millimeters per day. And so that's the average January. But another way to look at this is what is the 90th percentile instead of just the mean. So you can see the 90th percentile um, is 18, almost 19 millimeters. We could just um, say 100% here, and that would tell us the max if we want. So the maximum value that we ever saw in January for the entire period of record is 34 millimeters, 30 34.5 millimeters. Okay, so these are all good statistics to have, and these will be useful for a uh, future tutorial in which we will generate uh, precipitation stochastically. Thanks for watching.